Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants from Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, and I had to jump on here today because I really thought that there was some level of ethics left in professional sports, and that was my naivety um, because the Lakers actually drafted Bronny James with the number 55 pick today. And it's official. LeBron got his wish, his dream. He is on the same team with his son. Despite the fact that this is the most manipulated, manipulated. Can't even think of the word, man. The most manipulated embarrassment that I've seen in professional sports in my lifetime. The NBA draft is supposed to be something that players earn. There are countless sons of former players who are in the NBA who were drafted. They earned it by performing in college. Steph Curry, he earned it. Tim Hardaway Jr., he earned it. Who else? I had a whole bunch of guys' names that I wrote down. I forgot who they are because I'm actually so I'm so irritated by this. I'm irritated because it has set an awful precedent. For any future great player to basically hold the franchise he plays with by the balls and say, if you don't draft my kid, I'm bolting. Albeit, I don't think LeBron James was going to go anywhere. I don't. But he had that joker, that big joker in his spades deck. And he played it, no matter what he says. The same way I don't believe for one second he and J.J. Redick didn't have conversations about coaching the team. Rich Paul puts out late last week, early this week, that LeBron has given in to the fact that it's not important to him to play with Bronny. We all knew that was cap because there was a report today by Bob Myers from ABC ESPN saying that Rich Paul was spreading, was telling teams around the league, don't draft Bronny or he'll go play in Australia. As if those teams actually wanted Bronny to begin with. This situation reeks. And the fact that there are people that will get up here and say, well, it happens here, it happens there. In businesses, it happens. Guess what? It happens with owners of businesses. They own for... <clears throat> Key word. They own it. If LeBron James was the owner of the Los Angeles Lakers, he has every right to do whatever the hell he chooses. He does not own the Lakers. He and the Lakers are not a joint venture. They're not a partnership. He's an employee. Albeit, he's a free agent right now, so he's technically not an employee, but he would be an employee. So, the fact that the Lakers bent over and wasted a draft pick on a wholly unqualified athlete is crazy. People will say, oh, well, the second-round picks, they don't typically make the team. There are a lot of second-round picks in the NBA. Trust me. The Miami Heat alone, the Miami Heat alone right now 
on their roster. It's the one I can think of off the top of my head. Jimmy Butler's a first-round pick. Bam Adebayo's a first-round pick. Tyler Hero's a first-round pick. Jaime Hawkins is a first-round pick. Terry Rozier is a first-round pick. That's five players. Duncan Robinson wasn't drafted. I'm sorry, Nico Jovic was a first-round pick. Six. Duncan Robinson wasn't drafted. Kevin Love won't be on the team next year. Caleb Martin wasn't a first-round pick. Haywood Highsmith wasn't a first-round pick. I don't remember if they were drafted or undrafted players, but they weren't first-round picks. Half of the Heat's roster was not drafted in the first round. So to sit here and say that second-round picks have no value, that undrafted free agents have no value, there's a league full of second-round picks and undrafted free agents. And there's no, there would be nothing wrong for the Los Angeles Lakers to sign Bronny James as a UDFA, an undrafted free agent. Nothing wrong whatsoever with that. But to draft a player, let's go down the list, who averaged 4.8 points per game on 27% shooting on one of the worst Division I basketball teams in the country last year, coming off the bench, playing less than 20 minutes a game, with a heart condition. God bless him, he still has a heart condition. So you couple all the... If he had twenty, if he had, if he had averaged twenty points a game at USC last year, we're not having this conversation. But we're talking about someone who did very little in college on a bad team, did not start, coupled with a heart situation, and an agent who's out there saying he won't take a two wheel two way deal. So will he not play in the G League? I'm curious, because that's what it sounds like. So that means that an unqualified player is going to get a roster spot with the Lakers because of LeBron James, because LeBron James says, this is what I want. And he can deny it all day. It's clear as day. There's no logical reasoning whatsoever that you would draft Bronny James in this draft. No one wanted him. The Lakers bent over and took it in the ass because LeBron James said so. And it's a cold day in hell that I cannot believe that an NBA owner, multi-billionaire owner, is letting a player employee dictate how he or she, in this case, runs her business. If LeBron James wants to hire his son to be the CEO of Spring Hill Company, his production company, he has that right. Regardless of if he's qualified or not, he has that right. He is the owner of the company. It's his shit. But a lawyer, a lawyer who owns a law firm, can hire his son to be a copy boy, a mailroom guy, an HR guy, a chief operating officer, a chief financial officer, um, a secretary, a paralegal a marketer, but you know what he can't hire him to be? A lawyer, unless he goes to college, gets a bachelor's degree, and then goes to law school and gets a law degree and then passes the bar. There are requirements. There are qualifications. So sorry when people compare this to lawyers, and I heard the comparison about lawyers, the amount of steps it takes just for that son or daughter to be qualified to work in that law firm takes years of education. Doctors, the same thing. Undergraduate, med school, boards. You don't just become a doctor because your dad's a doctor and says, I'm going to hire you. Yeah, you can be his assistant, secretary, but you can't become a doctor. You can't, he can't hire you as a doctor unless you go to school. Stockbroker, you got to take, you have to get a license for this. Real estate agent, albeit the real estate agent, the real estate license is easy as hell. You still need to get a license for this. These are things that are required to hire your kids to do it. Now, look, if you own a business and you want to make your kid the chief financial officer, 
without having any accounting background, that's on you to put the, par- the, the, the life of your company in the hands of an unqualified child. That's your decision. But when people make these comparisons, this is professional sports. Professional sports. The people on these teams have worked their lives to get there. And I'm not sitting here saying that Bronny James has not worked hard. I'm not saying that. I'm saying his entire value has been hyped up and propped up because his father's name is LeBron. And how do I know this? I've watched him play in high school. I coached high school, AAU travel ball. I've seen some of the best players in the country in high school. And I promise to God that that top 30 ranking that got him in McDonald's All-American spot was completely manipulated. 1,000% manipulated. Because there's no way in hell that Bronny was better than 300 guys. If Bronny was a top 300 guy, that would be pushing it. He might be a top 500 guy. He's a good high school basketball. Hell, very good. You know what very good high school basketball players are? They're three-star athletes. They are three-star guys. They are not one and duns in college. And you're going to sit here and tell me that that ranking was legitimate? Bro, as a McDonald's All-American... And he averages under five points a game for one of the worst schools in the nation this year in college. Come on. Come on now. Like, we have to stop. Look, we know what it is. But there are people that are saying that it's not this. It is this. This is an absolute manipulation of the system. LeBron, he bent, he bent over the executives of the Los Angeles Lakers and say, you're going to do this or I'm going to kick you in the ass. That's it. And I'm going to leave. But I don't think he was ever going to leave. But he played that joker. This is a joke. This is an absolute joke. I can tell you that I've seen enough basketball for the last, I'm 46 years old. I have seen enough high school and college basketball for the last 25 years. Longer than that. But I coached it for seven. And I've seen the best guards in the nation in high school who would take Bronny to the cleaners, to the cleaners. We have to stop this. Tim Hardaway earned his spot. Steph Curry earned his spot. Austin Rivers, who people crack on, Austin Rivers earned his spot. Austin Rivers was the number one player in America coming out of high school. If you saw Austin Rivers play in high school, he was a motherfucker. At Duke, a motherfucker. He turned pro after one year because he was that good. Did his NBA career pan out the way he hoped? No. Still made a boatload of money. But he was a beast in high school and a beast in college. That's earning your spot. Mind you, none of these fathers have the clout that LeBron has. None of them were still playing the way LeBron is. But what are we doing to our sports when we have parents manipulating drafts? Parents, athletes who are parents of players manipulating drafts. This is such a bad look for the league, such a bad look for the Lakers, because what's going to happen in two years when LeBron hangs it up? Hell, it could be this year. Is, is Bronny James going to play in front of D'Angelo Russell if D'Angelo Russell's on that team? Is he going to play in front of Austin Reeves if Austin Reeves is on that team? Heck, they drafted Dalton Connect, which was a steal at 17. That guy is ready to play in the NBA. He's 23 and can fill the bucket. And a great shooter. Not a person shooting 27% from three in college. Dalton Connect can score. So they got a steal right there. 
But are we really going to have him? Pl- in, is he in the rotation? If J.J. Redick, who, uh, who LeBron owns as well, if J.J. Redick is playing Bronny James on opening day, opening night, I, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. This is not about Bronny James. This is about the manipulation of a system. Bronny James should have gone back to school. He should have gone back to school, gotten better. And if he got good enough, come back next year or the year after as a sophomore or a junior, and then entered the draft and earned his spot in the draft. And look, there are other players that probably shouldn't have been drafted, in my opinion, from what I've seen. But I can tell, but what the difference is, their parents didn't manipulate their spot. Their parents didn't hold the franchise over its knee and make them kiss the ring. Miami Hurricanes, Kaishan George. I watched that kid play all season. He's a good player. He's a freshman. He's 19. He's 6'7", though, 210. He averaged 7.6 points per game. The Hurricanes stunk this year. So when I saw that he was turning pro, I'm like, this is absolutely insane. But they're drafting Kaishan George off of projection and potential. He has a pretty jump shot. He's a He shot 41% from three at UM. He, had, he was put into some tough situations, made some big shots. I saw him play a lot. And when they said, when he turned pro, I was like, this is absolutely nuts. It's absolutely nuts. I still believe it. Kaishan George, is he's a good player. I don't think he should have been drafted number 24 by the Knicks. I think he's a reach, a big reach. Do I think he could have been a second round pick? Sure. Yeah, I do. Because his potential, his projection, he's also 6'7. Ronnie James was listed at 6'1 and a half after being listed at 6'4. 6'4. For the duration of his high school career from when he was a sophomore. And now he's shrunk three almost three inches. He can't handle the ball. He's a good athlete, not a great athlete. He can't guard point guards. He's never run a team. He shot 27% from three in college, which is a shorter three than the NBA. He got schooled in the combine by bigger guys on switches. Please tell me how exactly he's supposed to help the Los Angeles Lakers. This is what this is a business. Like, this is a business, the business of winning basketball games. And you're not going to sit here and tell me that Bronny James has any impact on the Lakers winning or losing next season. But there are players that in the draft that they could have taken that could have. Who may not be available as undrafted free agents who may have been picked right after Bronny James was picked. This is, this is sad. This is sad. I wish Bronny James the best. I genuinely wish him the best. I wish he would have gone back to school. Because I was afraid something like this was going to happen. I had this, I was hoping that the NBA executives would be on board, on, like showing brains. And, they, and all of them did, except for the Lakers. Because no one was drafting him. Because he's just not good enough. Not right now. I don't think he's a pro. Period. But I guess he could get better and become a potential role player in the NBA. Potential. Potentially. But that's about the ma- that's about the cap. That's the ceiling. Because he's not going to get taller. He's not going to get faster. He's not going to get quicker. He's not going to become elusive. He's not going to become Chris Paul, who's a six foot six one point guard. He's not becoming that. Like th- that's not in the cards. 
people remember what Chris Paul looked like when he was 19 years old. Like, he, like, unreal. Unreal. What happens when LeBron retires in a year or two? LeBron, Bronny James won't be on a front, won't be on a roster. Don't he won't be on a roster. There's no way. So you got you got the draft done, LeBron. Congratulations. We know you lied. You said that you didn't care anymore. We knew you always cared. That's all cap. That's all bullshit. But then what happens after? Because your son will not have gotten any better sitting on the end of someone's bench. Because if he's not going to play in the G League, how exactly is he supposed to become a better basketball player? Because he's not playing in college. So if he's not playing in the G League, he's not playing in college, and he's sitting the bench for the Lakers behind far more qualified players, how does he become a better basketball player? And how does he stay on the franch on any franchise or make any team when he hasn't been able to get better by actually playing? You can practice a whole lot. You can work out to the, to the, to the cows come home. But if you don't get the opportunity to actually play and compete in live game situations, you're probably not going to get a whole lot better. You're going to get marginally better, but that in-game competition against the, the guys who want to take your soul because they want the same spot you do. Beyond me. Beyond me. NBA, man, shit. And don't tell me that LeBron James has made billions for the NBA. He's part of them making billions, but there's also lots of parts to that. Steph Curry, Dwayne Wade, Kobe Bryant, Shaq, Tim Duncan, Dirk, Carmelo, Chris Paul, Giannis, KD, Clay. Now Luca, Joker, Jamal Murray, Embiid, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard. All these guys had something to do with it. Yes, LeBron has been the face of the league for the last decade and a half. Last decade primarily since he played, went to the Heat, really, realistically. But you know who had the highest sold jersey the last two years? Steph Curry. Steph Curry, I would argue, has transformed the NBA more than any player there is because he has changed the way people play. Everyone's a shooter now or thinks they're a shooter. Teams draft for shooting. Teams play the way the Boston Celtics just played in the lowest rated NBA finals besides COVID in the last two decades. Today, this year, not today, but this year's NBA Finals was rated worse on TV than the Heat Nuggets last year. And the Heat Nuggets was an abomination. And this year's series actually had more popular players on both sides with Jason Tatum and Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving and Jalen Brown. The Chicago Bulls versus Utah Jazz in 1998 drew 29 plus million viewers. You know how many the Celtics and Mavericks just drew? Just north of 11.3 million per game. The 1998 Bulls drew three times what this NBA Finals did. And people say that the ratings aren't down. The ratings are in the M in the NBA are in the toilet, which is why these TV deals are mind blowing because the ratings for the NBA have been awful for the last five years. Awful. <clears throat> but they think that people want to see fifty three pointers a game and and no defense and all that shit. This is all happening while LeBron James is in the NBA. 
And the Los Angeles Lakers, what, people think that the Lakers didn't sell out games for 40 years? They didn't need LeBron James to sell tickets. They're the Lakers. So anyone that says, well, this is a business decision, are you buying tickets to see Bronny James play? Get the fuck out of here. No, you're not. You're buying to see LeBron play, sure. But if LeBron retired tomorrow, guess what? The Lakers are still going to be sold out but in, for the rest of eternity. It's the most marketable, most marketable self-marketed franchise in the NBA. And it's not close. They're the Lakers. No matter how much I dislike the Lakers, it's the Lakers. They don't need any individual player to sell tickets for them. They sell themselves. Very sad day to me to see this type of shit happen in the NBA. We will see if he makes the team. I'm sure he will magically somehow as a second round pick at number 55 magically make the team and someone who's far more deserving will get cut. But this is not the same thing as people in business hiring their kids. This is not even remotely the same thing because if you own a business, you have the right to hire whoever the fuck you want. And if LeBron James was the owner of the Lakers, he would have the right to hire whoever the fuck he wants. But he's not the owner of the Lakers. He's not the owner of the Lakers. And now we're going to see what an absolute circus that franchise becomes for J.J. Redick in his first year of coaching, now after being accused of dropping N-bombs at Duke, dropping other things in emails about former ex-girlfriends. This is how J.J. Redick gets to start his career. Dealing with an absolute circus. That's all I got. Give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Come On Now Podcast. And on Twitter, X at Come On Now Pod. And be sure to subscribe. Thank you again for your support. Come on now. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up-to-the-minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.